cocktail sessions, educational and inspirational talks from experienced startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. So thank you so much for, you know, to Tech Cocktail and, and for the Downtown Project for bringing all of us here for this great exchange of ideas and, and thoughts. And, um, you know, my entire career has been at this very dynamic point uh, between technology and storytelling and, and where they come together. And so kind of it makes sense for me to talk about narratives and storytelling and hopefully how, you know, that potentially relates to, um, to business and startups. Um, but there's another like backstory to this, which is very interesting, and it kind of goes back to when Tony um, uh, was doing his his book tour. Um, and so, if you can just in the the high retina display in your head, because no slides were allowed, uh, if you can just visualize the the Maslow's uh, pyramid, you know, which very quickly to recap at the base, you know, it's it's about kind of human need, if you will, and and it's such a basic thing. But at the base of the pyramid, you you know, you have things like that are very fundamental, like just shelter, food, um, you know, sex, all of these things, and then you move up into the pyramid into things that have more engagement that that describe passion. Um, and then as you move further up into that pyramid, it becomes about self-actualization and, you know, who we are and what we, you know, why do we do what we do and how do we bring meaning into our lives. So that's kind of the basic Maslow's hierarchy. And Tony made this amazing observation in his book, which he kind of, in a super geeky way, like he talks about it as fractals, right, which is the self-similarity that you see all over, na you know, in nature. And he talked about sort of this, you know, the customer pyramid, you know, Chip Conley in his book, Peak already also talks about some of these same things. But, you know, you have, you have this idea of, of pleasure, passion, and then, you know, uh, meaning. And he said, you know, good businesses can be built with that in mind. I mean, you, you can start with, obviously a business has to be sustainable, it has to be profit making. But then you try to get into something that's a deeper engagement um, you know, with your customers, with your employees. And then you move on to something that hopefully transcends individuals or even the community for that matter and, and uh, brings meaning, right? And uh, when we met for lunch, when he was at Pixar, you know, we, we started talking about this idea. There's a very, you know, there's a great writer at Pixar, Michael Arndt. He wrote um, Toy Story 3, Little Miss Sunshine. And his sort of, um, wonderful idea is that essentially great stories are constructed in a very, very similar way. I mean, at the base of the pyramid, you have the plot. I mean, for a story to work, it must have, well, a story. It has to have some kind of a plot that moves. Um, but then as you move up into the pyramid, I mean, the thing that lets us empathize with the characters in these stories is the fact that uh, great characters, good characters have you know, they aren't perfect. Um, they are not like Frank. Uh, they're, they're broken in some way, or, or you know, they're, uh, in, there's something that's missing there. Um, and so there's an internal struggle. So as the, as the uh, plot is playing out, the character, a good character, will go through a journey and will come to a place where, you know, hopefully they're in a very different place than when you started, and yet they're still true to themselves, right? And so I think that's the second level of that, of that pyramid. And then at the top of the pyramid, you know, what Michael says is that you really like, and then, you know, he, he uses Star Wars as, as one of his, his favorite examples. But, and if you look at Toy Story 3, it has some of the same, same structural construction, but there has to be something that transcends, that takes you, um, you know, even beyond that, that character and their journey, right? It's like about, it could be something that's social, and it doesn't always have to be something good, right? It doesn't have to, but it's, it has to be something that is universal, right? And um, so I think that idea, like, really resonated uh, with me. And it was really, again, with, you know, with Tony kind of framing it as this fractal concept of happiness, or fra as he called it, the fractal of happiness, um, you know, to see that again in the, in the way that we can think about story structure was really interesting. And so as, you know, um, Ashish and, you know, my co-founder and I with Wamex, basically what we are trying to do is, is um, create technology that enables stories and storytellers of the future, right? That's basically our, our, our goal, and it's an ambitious goal, and, and so what. Um, so basically, you know, how do you think about that, right? And so one of the, the ways that, you know, we are thinking about it right now, especially when it comes to businesses and startups, is if you look at that pyramid, you know, again, uh, in your mind's eye, at the basic level, now we're talking about, let's say, products here, and, and how companies interact with customers, let's say, via their products. 
At the base of that pyramid, you need essentially products that work, right? You can have products that you know, aren't robust or are overpriced or whatever. I mean, you ultimately have to have an offering that makes sense, that's rational. But then if you move up into the pyramid, right, uh, customers now, they are looking for uh, products that also give them pleasure. It's not just enough to have a product that works. You want a product that gives pleasure as well. And you know, if, you, if I had said this 10 years ago, that would have been a radical statement, right? That was before iPhones and before all these wonderful things. And now even like, you know, uh, VC funds <laughs> have, have design interns, <laughs> right? So it's like we've come a long way from like the 60s when, for example, you know, IBM first started talking about good design is good business. Uh, everyone kind of at this point pretty much accepts that in order to have great products, they have to be well designed. So then the question is, well, what, what's next? How do you distinguish yourself further from there? And uh, if you look at the classic, you know, Maslow's hierarchy and, and the whole like happiness fractal, the next thing, the next, you know, the next natural thing in that pyramid is meaning. And so now this, now we get into this like very great place. Okay, you talk about meaning, meaning is super, super fuzzy. You know, when we talk about, we went to Zappos this morning and for the tour and, and you know, it's very clear that Zappos has this great culture. But how do you describe it? It's a very, very fuzzy concept. And the way that we, most of us, most people think about meaning and culture is through stories. That's how we pass. You know, when you, when you talk about Zappos culture, you're not gonna give them like, hey, here are the, you know, the, the, you know here's the three page culture of Zappos. The way culture passes between us is through stories, right? And the way that meaning is created between companies and individuals or customers or employees for that matter is through stories. So again, you know, the reason to come here was mostly to, to meet wonderful people and see what you know, amazing things are going on with the downtown project. And as uh, startup folks, you know, I'd like to encourage everyone, you know, we, we are, I mean, essentially as entrepreneurs, we are storytellers and we are telling stories. And I think Kathy brought this up. I mean, we are always telling stories. And so it's good, you know, it's good to step back and say, hey, you know, is this the right story? You know, am I telling the right story? And furthermore, am I telling the story in the most effective way possible, right? And so that's kind of the message I'd like to kind of bring to, to our talk today. I'll sort of wrap up very quickly by saying just a couple of things about Vamix, you know, because that's the space we're in and this is what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, we feel like, okay, so one of the things that we are thinking about sort of bottom up is uh, if stories are gonna become the key to how companies essentially, or the companies of the future that are gonna be successful. I mean, already, I mean, storytelling is not new as a concept to companies, we, we know that. But I think it's almost gonna become, as with design, it's gonna become a necessity, right? So then the question is, what do those stories look like? Do they look like the stories that you watch when you go to the theater or, or, or when you're watching television? And you know, our thesis is no, not really, right? The stories of companies or the stories that communicate have to be more active than that. They cannot be passive experiences. They have to be interactive. They have to be stories where your users, your customers, your employees can become a part of that narrative. It's not enough to just um, present the narrative. And then the second thing is, you know, we live in a world with lots of media, lots of uh, communication all around us. So when you have inspired somebody with a story like that, uh, how can you quickly, like you don't want that to be a two-step process. The question is how can you move them from there to action? You know, and, and that action could be, you know, them like basically deciding to uh, apply to your company. The action could be them going buying your product or that, that action can be them going to a social network and talking about this new product that, you know, they have experienced. It could be any of those things, but you want to really reduce that friction because, you know, you, you inspire them with your story, but then you want them to be able to act on that, to be, you know, again, to be active with it. And that, those are the kind of problems that essentially we are trying to look at. It's like how, you know, and again, I said, I know this is ambitious and I'm sure we will be a small part of, of this ecosystem that I, I'm pretty sure that this is where things will go. And, you know, hopefully we will be a small part of that. So again, thank you so much.